Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to talk to you about my Fat Shark HDO experience. So, for such a long time I've been saying that OLED needs to be in Fat Sharks. In fact, check out this post that I made from October 2017 asking whether Fat Shark had considered Sony OLEDs in their goggles. And then the HDO was announced, and guess what? They've got Sony OLEDs in them. <laughs> so I'm going to take full credit for that, obviously. And then all of these reviews came out complaining that the field of view is too small and the DVR was the same as before, and that OLED is a volatile technology and they're just going to burn out, which I thought were all unjustified comments, but I think it sort of stems from a general frustration in the hobby because, let's face it, with us being stuck with analog video, it's not moving as quick as any of us wants it to. So, first of all, let's go on the defense. So, the largest field of view that has ever been in Fat Sharks is 50 degrees field of view, and it's a postage stamp size compared to box goggles. And the 37 degree field of view in the OLED unit isn't that much of a smaller number than 42 degrees field of view. It just sounds it. And anytime Fat Shark or any other goggle manufacturer, for that matter, has gone higher than 42 degrees, the edges of the screen has been blurred. And at this very moment, I can hear the comments in my head. You know, you get this as a YouTuber. I've got the 50 degree field of view HD2s and I see a perfect image with no blurring. And I think people make those comments because they believe I'm giving out false information. But goggles are so specific to how far apart your eyes are and how big your face is and how big your nose is. So, yes, there are a rare number of people who are fine with the HD2s. In fact, there's a rare number of people who get the blurring but still want the large field of view, hence Fat Shark re-releasing the HD2s, and that's absolutely fine by me. Anyways, I'm getting off track. So, my friend got an early pair of the HDOs and I could instantly see the benefits of OLED over the old LCDs found in the Dominator series. And the smaller field of view isn't really noticeable compared to the HD3s, but obviously it's a little bit smaller. In fact, the HD3s often push some people past their limit and they get the blurred edges with those as well. So the slightly smaller field of view of the HDO will just mean that more people will see a clearer image around the edges of the screen. So as for OLED versus LCD, well, with OLED the image is more crisp, the colors are better and richer, and when it comes to low light situations and contrast, the OLED outperforms the LCD. But what about all of these burn-in comments? Well, you know, these are not cheap units. They are Sony, so there's no issues with the quality. And it's Fat Shark, so if there's going to be a problem, they will fix them down the line. And that's the end of that for me. You know, my LCD goggles have been back to Fat Shark, I think, three times to be replaced. And that is why you go for Fat Shark. But what about the IPD adjustment staying the same? Well, the cases have stayed the same, at least the shape anyways. And it's that which is the limiting factor for the IPD adjustment. So goggles are just going to have to get bigger if you want more IPD adjustment. And why has the DVR stayed the same? Well, I've talked about this in other videos, and the reason that the DVR isn't changing is because there is no other DVR unit on the market that doesn't drop a load of frames when you throw old, crappy analog video at it. And that's why most of the goggles that you see on the market have this same DVR unit in it, because it works and it's reliable. And, you know, this hobby is small in comparison to other other sectors. So while the rest of the world is trying to do away with analog video, this very small niche of the market isn't enough for people to want to develop it any further. So what about the offense? Well, there are some choices that I don't agree with. 
on the HDO. The main one is that they are stuck in a 4x3 format. And when you ask Fat Shark why that is, they say that 16x9 is a waste of pixels. And while they are technically correct, there are a lot of 16x9 cameras on the market now. And you know, not everyone has one copter and one camera, so I think they are definitely missing a trick here. I also don't like that the HDMI input does not switch to 16 by 9 at all. So on the HD3s, it does do that. So if you have a Phantom 4 and plug in the HDMI, you will get a correct aspect ratio. And I don't know why they didn't do this for the HDO because most HDMI sources are going to be 16 by 9 and this is advertised as a HD goggle. There's also no 3D option with the HDO. Now, it's not something that I've ever used myself. It's more of a thing that you would use if you were watching movies through it, but the HD3 does have that. So again, the HD3 being much cheaper and more refined, it's an attractive option against the HDO. Now, I didn't pull the plug on the HDOs right away because with new tech comes bugs and that was the case. There was a slight bug when using NTSC cameras which produced a line at the bottom of the image and in the end if you wanted to get that fixed you had to send them in to Fat Shark. So I left it a couple of months for that to be ironed out and I received my pair. And I put them on to fly and I could barely see the screens because the sun was shining through the casing, which left me completely confused. The first thing that I did was grab my HD3s and put them up to a light. And then I did the same with the HDOs and I could instantly see light shining through the vents as well as through the eyepiece. And the reason I was so confused about this is because at this point there had been so many reviews of this goggle and surely that would have been a showstopper for everyone. So luckily I had a friend who had received one of the first batches of the HDO and I went to have another look at theirs and before even trying them on I could see that the plastic was different. So the first batch of HDOs have the same casing as the old HDO threes which is a black plastic painted white and this new casing is a white material and it allows light to pass through it now i was pretty shocked to see this because fat shark have been so vocal about how much testing that they do and that they've been a year in the making but in reality mid batch they've changed the casing material and just sent it out in an unusable condition in my opinion and i just cannot defend them for that now i'm told that their factory that they are using advised them to change the material and that the material had been tried and tested but they'd started using a different material that hadn't been agreed with Fat Shark or something like that and you know I don't want to hear excuses about factories because at the end of the day it's still your decision to use a certain factory so if the factory screws up it's your screw up and that's my opinion on that. But with all that being said, four weeks later, I have some new shells. And it's still the same material as the last shell, but apparently it's a denser material and it won't let the light through. But I think it's safe to say that from this point on, the material is not going to be the same as those first batches. And, you know, a lot of the cheaper companies are often accused of changing the product after sending it out to a reviewer. And here's one of the top line companies that appear to have done the same. And I think it sends out a mixed message for people piling all of their money into these top end brands. And when Fat Shot talks about a year of testing, at this point, these cases have had three weeks of testing, haven't they? So Fat Shark gave me the option of sending the goggles into them to replace the shells or they've given me the option to have the shells sent to me directly along with a link on how to install a LaForge module which you know just shows you how to take it all apart and I've chosen to do that because at least perhaps I can help others replace their shells or if you're not sure whether you want to replace the shells yourself then 
maybe me showing you how easy or difficult it is will help you with that decision. Now, as a viewer, you're probably thinking it's crazy to not just send them into Fat Shark and them do all the work. But you have to remember at this point, people have had these up to four weeks and they've either bodged tape all over them or, you know, they don't want them gone for a week because it's their only set of goggles. And you will have to cover the cost of sending them out to Fat Shark as well. So let's see how easy it is to do the swap. So the first thing we need to do is remove the blanking plates and the RX module and of course the face plate and I'm also removing some diopters that I've got in there. Then we need to undo three screws. The first is underneath the nose and these are Phillips screws and the others are at the side. You have to give them a bit of a whack because these screws are also holding in some of the circuitry so put those to one side. And then you can remove the head strap. And the next thing you need to do is press down firmly at the bottom part of the nose and that will undo a clip. You then need to flip the goggles around and do the same. So press firmly on the bottom part of the goggle and we have three clips there. Next we need to unclamp a flat flexible cable so I'm using a blunt screwdriver to undo the clip and this is the part that's most tricky if you're doing this yourself so you need to remove that there and there's also a JST connector to the DVR which also needs to be removed. So next I'm taking the module bay out and just switching it to the new case just so that I know which is which and then there's another screw on the power module so that needs to come out and that lifts out as well and again putting it in the new case so that I don't get the pair mixed up and putting that single screw back in place. It's all Phillips screws here. Now this is the really tricky part so we've got another flat flexible cable and a clamp and anyone who's ever worked with flat flexible cables will know that they are just so temperamental and brittle and they break easily and this is what's making me think that you really Fat Shark should be doing this so I've undone the clamp the cable comes out and then it's got this goo on it here to stop it moving around you know to stop there being any breaks in the cable and you're only going to get one go at undoing that and then there's two screws to undo for the DVR so I'm just doing that and again I'm going to very quickly take this out and move it to the new case so I don't get them mixed up and I'm going to screw that in again using the same screws. Now these are self tapping screws so you do have to tighten them up quite a bit and there's a, a bit of plastic residue from the previous casing. So this is the flat flexible cable going back in and you have to be very careful there clamping it up and then I'm just going to make sure that that is secured down with the original goo and then you can see the eyepieces just fit in there. So I've removed the module part so I can refit the flat flexible cable and that's clamped in. You can see I can fit it back in this side here. And then the JST connector goes in the other side. And now we have to be really careful not to trap any of these cables. So the RX module cable, that needs to be pushed forwards, otherwise it gets in the way of the screens. And the IPDs need to match the IPDs of the screens as well, otherwise it won't match. And then we've got this other cable here that needs to be out of the way and not trapped. And then, of course, you can clip it back all together. And, you know, it's not that difficult to do. And you can see I can adjust the IPDs. I think my only worry is going to be the durability of those flat flexible cables. You know, I've broken a lot in the past. But anyways, let's put it back together. So that was the head strap going back on. And then we've got the screws going back in here as well. So both of those. And then the face plate that just clips back on there. And, you know, put in my diopters back in and then finally the blanking plate. Now while I was doing that I did compare the two cases so this is the original that I received up to an energy saving light bulb and you can see there we've got this orange orb and you do get that when you are flying very distracting and this is the new material so yeah no light coming through and you know it's doing a similar job to what the material of the HD3s does so I think they have corrected it 
to the point that it needs correcting. So as you can see my HDO experience hasn't been straightforward and you know I can't say that I've had a good experience. I mean they're at a point now where I'm happy with them but you know when you are spending $600 up front they should be like that out of the box. One thing that I will say is that Fat Shark will always fix any issue that you have. It's just a shame that the issue was there in the first place and I think that's all I'm gonna say about it. I'm gonna continue to use them and they'll be used for my videos on the channel and I will link them in the below and hopefully you will get a better experience than me. And you know I do still think the HD3s are a good option especially for the actual HD side of things you know but in the end the OLED screens are better. Are they worth upgrading to $600 when you've already got the HD3s? Probably not but there you go that is my experience and I'll link them in the below if you wish to get some as well as my Patreon and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe. Cheers!